Daniel, I'm going to start by asking you about how you uh, became involved in this film and how did you come to the script? Um, I was given the script by my manager, Keith, actually, who's hiding at the back there. And I just, you know, I get to read a lot of scripts. I read it and I fell in love with it. I loved the fact that this was a really powerful story that was set about and about three women. I thought that was really unusual. And I just really knew that I had to make it or try to make it. So that's how I came upon it. And then I spoke to Julia and said to her, I really love this. I'd like to work with you on developing the script. And she was very open to that. And we spent about six months going backwards and forwards and Skyping and stuff like that. And then ultimately um, started to get people on board to do it, really, like Britt and Sam and, and these guys, you know who really brought it to life. So, yeah. Can I ask you, um, you know, one of the things that I truly love about the film is that it has elements of a kind of feminist Western. It also has elements of a kind of home invasion, uh, you know, a genre. But these are, you know, brought in and then transformed into something completely different. And, uh, you know, who bought what, given that we know there are, are traces of uh, Western uh, uh, affection very evident in Harry Brown as well. Yeah. I mean, I love Westerns. I was brought up on Westerns, really. My dad would sit me down and I'd watch John Ford and John Wayne movies. And it was very, we, it was very equal, I have to say. I mean, Julia had the initial script there. But when I read it, I felt quite passionately that elements should change for certain reasons. And without boring everyone in all the details of that, um, I work quite intuitively. And through conversation, we had new ideas and developed it. And so it was really a, it was really a interesting piece of teamwork, I think. But I need that with a writer. I need to be able to work um, collaboratively. And because I have thoughts of how scenes can be done, maybe more visually or much more simply or more complex. So I don't know. I just have a feel for how I would like to do it for right or wrong. And I just have to follow my heart, really. Muna, can I ask you, well, firstly, congratulate you on what I think is just an extraordinary performance. Thank you. I, I think you really embody this kind of shift in MAD, which goes, you know, from uh, from a very subservient sort of position to being very empowered and, and very much an agent in what takes place. Uh, can you talk about, you know, your attraction to the character and also how you developed her? Um, well, Julia did an amazing job crafting all the characters and crafting the story. And um, what I found very interesting about MAD was... Yes, she was a slave, but you know, underneath that veil of slavery resided a woman who was just learning to find her voice and find her personal identity and also find her where she fit in in this new dynamic with the women and with the changing climate with the Civil War. So um, all those things were very attractive to me. Um, and. I'm very opinionated, so to be able to hold my tongue was very hard. <laughs> and to learn how to do that um, with the grace that Mad had was, was, uh, was challenging. <laughs> mm. But um, she's taught me a lot, yeah. Mm. And, and how did you work with, I mean, I think your, your, your performance is accompanied by two very fabulous performances by uh, Britt and Haley as well. How did yeah. you work with them? Oh, well, with Britt and I, um, when I originally got the role, uh, we Skyped. And I was a bit nervous to Skype with her because I'm a fan and I love her work. And, and when I'm talking about characters, I can sound a little crazy. So I was, I was worried <laughs> um, about our conversation. And then after a Skype call, I was like, Oh my God, she's as insane as I am. This is going to be great. <laughs> um, and then Haley came along later, and Haley is just the most utmost professional, sweet, amazing individual, and so so, so talented. And so we just helped each other. I mean, the scenes were really tough to do, so we were just um, we just kept asking, "Well, what do you need? What do you need?" And we would just help each other out through, you know, different scenes that we were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Kyle, I, I think Kyle, I, I haven't actually measured, but maybe you have the most credits in this festival, um, ha having uh, been in Monsters Dark Continent and also having an appearance in Fury, which is our closing night film. Um, so firstly, congratulations on that. Uh, but can I, um, can I ask you uh, just to sort of elaborate on how you came to the project and, um, and your interest in it? Um, well, I saw the script first and was just so surprised that um, a story like this was being told on this scale mm. where um, the female protagonists, A, are Southern, but they're the heroines of the story and the Yankees are the bad guys. And it's a slice of history that I think is completely overlooked, the end of the war, really. Mm. And finding these three women come into themselves was absolutely incredible to read. And um, I really wanted to be a part of it because of that. And Julia's writing was incredibly spare and beautiful. And then when I knew Daniel was doing it, I was just like, oh my god. Yeah, I was just so happy to be a part of it. Yeah. Great. And, and Nicholas, for you, um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about how uh, the, the cast actually worked together and what was the process? Were you doing rehearsals together in advance of the film or, or uh, you, you know, were you all sort of doing your individual parts as the shooting progressed? Um, not as far as I know because we, I was kind of like a lone wolf in the film. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have um, much to do with these guys but we hung out a lot and we were on set together quite a bit and um, there was lots of talking um, before the scenes were shot and you know, developing stuff and working things out. So it was a really nice, uh, it was a really good process, actually, the way I do like to work. Daniel, I'm going to ask you about the, the setting of the film because I think uh, it, the, the, the locations are just unbelievably evocative and they are very, very powerful in terms of um, presenting the sense of, mm. of um, and the setting of the action. So uh, could you talk about what you were looking for when you were looking for those, um, those locations? Yeah, I mean, really, we went to, we actually shot the film in Romania and I, we wanted to find somewhere that looked like um, North Carolina. And the reason we went to Romania is because um, you can shoot... Um, it's better value for money. Shooting in America is very expensive. And we, this is a low-budget film, so we needed to get the maximum amount for our money. But what's amazing about the locations we went to in Romania is the countryside is so very unspoiled. And in many ways, you would really struggle to find that in America. You know, three, four-hundred-year-old oak trees just in the middle of areas. And we were shown a series of location possibilities and I remember with Martin Rue, the cameraman, walking up to the place where we eventually built our farmhouse, because all the locations we were built, the farmhouse, the, the keeping room, the barn, um, the trading post, and the house where, you know, where that poor girl is dead. Um, and it was so beautiful and so peaceful. And I just knew, we just knew where the house should be. And we were allowed to build there because it was public land and that the local mayor was very excited that Muna was coming. So <laughs> it was great. <laughs> and yeah, it was just wonderful. And I really liked it because we had a wonderful production designer who was incredibly knowledgeable, an American lady, on the sort of period of architecture. She came up with some wonderful drawings, set designs. And she made these models, and then we positioned them, you know, as though in the landscape of a small scale. It was a bit spinal tap, actually. But um, it was just wonderful. And from that moment where you arrive somewhere in the middle of nowhere, where maybe where people haven't walked before even, and then you build the set. And that's where we lived, isn't it, for, for weeks on end, making this. And it was, it's great. I love that, because then you, you really get away and you have solitude and peace, and you're in your own world making the film. There's nowhere to go. Mm. There's nothing around. Mm -hmm. You know, shooting in London, there's a million distractions. Where we shot in Romania, there uh, was no distractions, was there? <laughs> <laughs> Apart from, well, there was nothing, was there? No. I was going to say something, but... Well, well, <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it's interesting to hear you talk about the sort of valuing of that 
of that quality because one of the very striking things about the direction here, of course, is that um, we, we get lulled into that quality and then there is some very strong and quite violent uh, um, yeah. sort of puncture marks along yeah. the way. Um, how did you sort of work out where you wanted those to land and, uh, and, and, and the sort of balance of that, I guess, across the film? Well, I tried to, um, I mean, with Julia, um, elements of that were in the scripts and I worked with her to develop where that would be. But I like um, creating a rhythm in the film that you then interrupt and break because I like to, I do enjoy um, creating feelings of discomfort along the way. Um, so far, I've only done two films, but both have a similar thing where you go along and you're lulled into a full sense of security and then you're hit and you're awoken and it's broken. And I quite enjoy that. And I also enjoy, I hope you don't mind, but I quite enjoy making, trying to affect the audience into feeling uncomfortable as well. And I'm not afraid of going to places that are difficult and uncomfortable. And, you know, I think there's lots of different types of films. And I know some people might find this film very difficult and uncomfortable to look at. But I think that it's an area of history which is often overlooked. And I'm glad we had the chance to make it. And, um, you know, to, to have the chance to analyze the relationships of those three women with such amazing actors was really um, incredible, actually, for me. Because almost wherever I desired to go, they could go because they're so good at their craft. 